What's up, people? Today I want to come to you with a video, and it's in regards to a next step when going into court. I've been um, advocating whenever your rights are violated or the police officers or whoever steps out of line of doing their servitude towards you and removing cases to federal court, there's this thing called a counterclaim. But one of the things that I've been reading a lot is the confusion of immunity. Because they'll say, oh, well, we can't do that because a police officer has qualified immunity. That is half true. I also did a video regarding how that immunity is lost, when it is lost, and how to combat the actions of a police officer that is pushing towards um, stating they even have immunity when it's actually lost once they go outside of their duties. I'm going to go over a couple of cases and then I'm going to go into the aspects of the counterclaim. And just like I said, any case, even a traffic citation can be moved to federal court. And again, that is something that we're going to get into because again, we're at places where we're getting a great foundation for the learning of what the violations are, how it's violated. We've seen some aspects of it, but we're also making sure as we move forward, we are getting a total grasp on what it is that's being done and how to do it the right way to make sure that these actions don't continue. Now, the one thing that we're going to address first off is Dugan v. Rank. 372 U.S. 609, 1962. The doctrine of sovereign immunity raised by defendants is inapplicable since plaintiffs contend that the defendants' actions were beyond the scope of their authority or they were acting unconstitutionally. Now, we also know once they act unconstitutionally, they are no longer actors of the government. So as no longer being officer whoever they are just betty smith which immunity is waived in that sense under 15 usc 1122 so therefore whenever i'm talking about these things you sue police officers in their personal capacity under civil rights that is the jurisdiction in which you are going in now the subsection will be 42 USC 1983 because they have no qualified immunity in their personal capacity because you do not take the office of police officer into court you take the person because the person is the actor that violated the rights not the officer because the officer stopped being an officer when they applied the violation now another case that we're going to go into because it's one that i actually went into owen v city of independence 445 usc 622 1980 a municipality has no immunity from liability under section 1983 flowing from its constitutional violations and may not assert the good faith of its officers as a defense to such liability. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating constitutional right from liability. Now those things are the crux of why. Why do I use their personal capacity? Why do I use um, Title 42 Section 1983 of the United States Code? Because a municipality which would be officer has no immunity from liability under that section um, flowing from constitutional violations and again I went over another case and I'm not really going to go into it on this one but you have seen it I'm going to place it in the description but also Owens v Haas it is a second circuit 1979 case which goes into the Monell case, which I'm going to put in the description. Counties and other local government units come within the Monell holding, and counties, therefore, can be found liable under 
1983 for their actions causing constitutional deprivations. And the reason why I brought that in is because I showed you a, a um, previous case which the supervisor can be held liable for the actions of the subordinates. Just as when we're asking questions and they must articulate, those are things that have to be done. Why? Because they have a fiduciary duty to our benefit. So when that is not done, you ask a question, they don't answer, they committed fraud. Now, if they continue, when you ask for a supervisor, they refuse to get the supervisor. They have then gone outside of their, the scope of their duties because they are servants. They don't make decisions for you. So when you're looking at these things and we're going into it, and let's say you go ahead and you get this ticket, you sign it, and it's under duress because they've threatened you with arrest if you don't sign it. Okay, cool. Now let's move to the next part of that. There's this thing called removing it to federal court, which, again, that's going to be something that's going to be addressed later. But once we have it in federal court, this is where we can then sue them for their actions, such as the ticket itself. And counterclaims may be brought against an opposing party under the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Title 13. And give you the greatest part of this section is 13. The entire section deals with the counterclaims and removals. Well, counterclaims, excuse me, not removals. But 13A defines compulsory counterclaims, which arise when counterclaims out of the transaction or occurrence that is the subject matter of the opposing party's claim. So their claim is that you violated a traffic ordinance that is a constitutional violation because they cannot restrict your local motion if you are not participating in a privilege at that time or there's no damage to property or no damage to person or they did not witness you committing a felony why because that is your god-given right that is the right of the constitution as it is written currently now, and I've shown you a ton of cases that support what I just said. Now, when you're looking at it, you also have a couple cases that are in there. And one that I highlighted was Baker v. Oh, excuse me. Baker and Gold Seal Liquors, 1974. And it basically allows permissive clowner, counterclaims which are exclusively defined as any claim that is not compulsory. The reason being is because you have an opportunity to do it and it works just like any other claim. There is a time limit. So the time limit is at the time of the action. If you do not do something at that time, you lose your right to do so. Counterclaims may be brought against any opposing party. So it does not matter because when you're deal dealing with a civil issue, you can counterclaim if there has been a violation and if it has been something that has been done that violated your constitutional rights, which is outside of their duties. And I'm going to close with this because, again, I brought up the fact that a supervisor can be held liable. And generally, they're not going to be the initial part of any initial contact, such as uh, basically even a, a meeting for the most part, the initial contact that you have with an officer for whatever reason. But 13H allows new parties to be brought into the suit. So when you're doing your counterclaim, you can add individuals. And in cer certain cases where I'm going to discuss in a live regarding asset forfeiture, if there is a tow truck company that is involved, if there is a tow truck driver that's involved, if there are any other people that are involved outside the, the incident, they can be added at the time of the counterclaim. So again, it's about getting your due diligence, under the business of the counterclaim, and also understanding fully what your rights are. We're going to get deeper.
want you to understand as we go along is only going to get better so keep that in mind immunity is lost when they violate your god given rights which are restricted on them by the constitution of the united states when you do that don't worry about fighting or doing court in the street you do court in court you handle that business in court so when you get to wherever they're trying to send you state court superior court whatever you remove it to federal court because that's the place you assert your federal rights you do that you gather evidence such as their oath of office you take any evidence or any documentation they've given you you use that as evidence against them and then you go and sue them in their personal capacity going to go through but again making sure you have the foothold you need and the understanding to support it until next time